Hello and good morning. Good morning. We are grateful that you're jumping on with us today for a daily Devo. Um, it's always great to have people connect with us. Thanks for jumping on. We appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak to you, connect with you for just a few minutes um, as we start our day. I hope everyone had a good restful sleep. And if not, we pray that God will give you the strength to get through this morning. Uh, it's, it's looking pretty nice outside, kind of like overcast, hopefully not too much rain here in New York City. Uh, today's the 23rd of April, and so uh, we're grateful to have you. We are talking about, in this daily devotion, as you are jumping on, um, eight things that matter to God, that please the Lord, really, we're talking about, um, and we are in, we are at the, the fourth one. Um, we're gonna get into it in just a minute. We encourage you, if you can, um, if you're enjoying this devotion, we encourage you to share this um, with your friends. Hit the share button, and what that will do is get it out to all of your friends circle. That would mean a lot to us, mm -hmm. and I believe to the Lord, because it's uh, being a witness of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, which every person needs to hear. So eight things that matter to God. We've talked about trust. We've talked about courage. Yesterday, we talked about compassion um, and Jesus having compassion on the masses and on the individual. Today, we're going to be talking about one that is um, not often talked about, but I think maybe one of the most enduring and important qualities in the Christian life, which is humility. Humility. So eight things that please the Lord that matter to God. Humility is right smack dab in the middle. And uh, we're reading from Luke chapter 14, and I've got a couple other scriptures that I think are important um, for us to look at today. Luke chapter 14, beginning in verse 8, then we're going to read verses 10 through 11. So that's Luke 14, 8, and then 10 and 11. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. Verse 10, but when you are invited, take the lowest place so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Let me uh, just take a peek here at Pastor Nikki Gumbel's devotion. This is based on, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Pastor Nikki Gumbel's one year uh, through the Bible, Bible in one year. This is day 101, where he talks about eight things that please God. And here's what he writes about humility. He says, do you worry about your status as compared to others? Jesus speaks about humility. He tells us to take the lowest place. He says, do not take the place of honor for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. As the message version puts it, if you walk around with your nose in the air, you're gonna end up flat on your face. But if you're content to be simply yourself, you'll become more than yourself. What a great word. The thing I wanna just encourage us with today, um, this is such an important quality. It, it applies to marriage, it applies to parenting, it applies to your, your employment, it applies to your service in the local church. Really, whatever you do, humility is one of the most important qualities and characteristics. And the mm -hmm. first thing I wanna just mention is humility is something that we do. It's not something that we want God to do because if God humbles us, <laughs> it's not gonna be fun. Um, Jesus said, whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So it's something that we do. In James chapter four, James, the Lord's brother says, humble yourselves. First Peter chapter five, verse six, Peter says, humble yourselves. I wanna read just one other scripture with this um, that is one of my favorites. Philippians chapter two, Paul says this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. 
Your attitude, the attitude of humility that Jesus wore should be the same in you as it was in Christ Jesus. And then it goes on to say, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. The greatest example of humility that has ever existed is the God of the universe, worshiped in all splendor and all glory, privileged position at the right hand of the Father, leaving all of that for us, forsaking his glory, coming in the form of a human being, dying on a cross. My friends, we have the greatest example. If you're a follower of Jesus, um, which gives us no right to complain, <laughs> which gives us no right to disobey, and which mm -hmm. gives us every right to serve. So I, I just want to encourage you, um, if you want to practice humility, here's a couple quick tips, and then I'll let my wife just kind of share here. Humility is practically expressed in our obedience to the Word of God. This morning I was reading my devotion, talking about Peter denying Jesus, and immediately my thought was, man, I wouldn't have done that if I was Peter. That's pride. <laughs> I've done that all the time. I've denied Jesus. You know, when Jesus has asked me to speak to that person across the street or stop your car and maybe pull over and help that person, when we, when we say no to that, we're putting up walls of pride and we do it all the time. And so I wanna encourage us, obeying the word of God is one of the most important things. As you read the word of God, the thing you want to be doing as you're reading it is to be saying to yourself, how, God, do you wanna to speak to me today? God, open my heart. God, give me a tender and soft heart, a humble heart to hear what you wanna say. And number two, quickly, humility is expressed in service. I know a lot of us um, have to serve our kids right now, especially with our kids being home. And I've heard a lot of people complaining, and I think it's funny too, trust me, I know it's crazy. But here's the, here's the framework I wanna spin it in today. You get to be home with your kids. You get to serve your kids. You get to be with your family if, you, if you're if you blessed enough to have a family to be with in this time um, of quarantine and coronavirus. Let's look at it like this. God, how do you want me to serve my kids today? God, how do you want me to, to build a relationship with them today? God, how do you want me to, to serve my wife today or my spouse today? How do you want me to serve my neighbors? Because humility is expressed in obedience it's expressed in service, and it's something that we do. <laughs> it's something that we're called to do ourselves, mm. lest the Lord do it for us, and we don't want that. Mm. You're up. Yeah. Um, I can't help but think about how easy it is for us to humble ourselves before strangers, mm. but we don't humble ourselves before those we love yeah, that's as so much. Good. You know, And so that's my conviction is that there are moments in during this quarantine where the kids will want me to do something or I'm just really tired or Nick will say, and I'm just kind of a little bit harder and it takes me a little longer to humble myself with my husband and my kids yeah. or, you know, even my parents or anyone else. And, and yet if I see someone on the street or, you know, someone need, I'm like, okay, sure. I'll humble Hi. myself, you know? And, um, <laughs> and so, true. You know, so I would encourage you, you know, to be mindful of those moments. Like yesterday, I'll give you an example. I was on the couch, I was organizing some schoolwork and just kind of, you know, relaxing after work. And around 4 or 4.30, Isaiah starts cooking dinner. And uh, he goes, Mom, I need you to help me. And I was like, you need me to help you? What do you need help with? And he just kept saying it. And then it was like a check in my spirit that says... He just wants you to stand next to him and work with him in the kitchen. Mm. And I, you know, and I got convicted mm. because I'm like, he doesn't need my help. He's such a good cook. You know, I could just sit on the couch and relax. Not that I'm not relaxing every day anyway. But um, I, so I get up and I start helping him and we start talking. And, and it was just like that moment of realizing that he just wanted me to be there. Mm. And I almost missed out on that moment. And, um, and I remember this show, I don't know, it's kind of silly, but there was a show, there's a show called This Is Us. And there was an episode where the middle son 
kind of started feeling like he was in therapy and he want he was feeling like left out of his mom's love. And so the one thing she said, she kept saying is we had to have a moment. I know we did. I know we've had our moments and I don't want to be that parent that misses out on those moments. And we're going to miss out on moments. We're not perfect, but there are those times where God puts that check in your spirit and says, no, you need to do this with your child, or you need to do this with your husband, or you need to do this for your parents, or you need to do this for your aunt or your uncle, or you need to do this for a neighbor. Maybe you're single, maybe you don't have children, and maybe you just like to be to yourself, but there are times God puts that check in your spirit to go do something. Don't miss out on that moment, because I guarantee you that's gonna be a moment that will transform your life yeah. or transform that person's life Yesterday, I'm praying that that moment of me just standing with Isaiah cooking tostones and pork chops and rice was that moment for him. And so humility is not just about you. Hmm. It's about being an example to someone. I'm being an example to my children. I'm helping to raise them up alongside my husband to be the kind of Christians and women, woman, a man of God that they need to be. And I can't do that if I'm sitting on the couch in my phone. And so that was my moment of showing humility, of putting myself last so that my son could spend time with his mother. So Yeah, that's so good. So we want you to think about that today. This, this idea of humility, it really does please God. Mm -hmm. God goes on to say, those that humble, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, those that humble themselves, the Lord's going to lift yes, up. Jesus. And so maybe you're believing God to lift you up, mm -hmm. um, to lift you up in relationships, to lift you up at your job, to lift you up in ministry, whatever it may be. Um, don't worry about the lifting. God knows how to lift. Amen. God knows how to elevate. Yes. God knows how to promote way better than we do. We don't want to be like self-promoting Satan. We want to be like Jesus who said, Father, not my will, yours be done. I've Amen. come to offer my life as a sacrifice for the world. Let's, let's be like Jesus. Let's take on his attitude. Let's take on his, his hands in serving others. Let's be obedient to the word of God and not just say, well, I've read that before. I don't need to read those genealogies or what. <laughs> we just skip over things. It just mm -hmm. shows that our hearts need to be humbled mm -hmm. in a good way because yes. God gives grace to the humble. So you want yes. more grace? It's time to go lower. He must increase and we must decrease. Praise yes. God. All right, so we're gonna pray for you. Mm -hmm. And um, we thank you again. It's really humbling to see you on watching this, sharing this. We put it on YouTube uh, as well if you wanna share it that way mm -hmm. with friends. Thank you so much. Again, it's not about us, our vision, our mission is to make Jesus the hero of our faith, our words, yes. and our actions. So we love you. Let's pray. Honey, you want to start us, and then sure. I'll, I'll end her. Sure. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for, yes, God. for your truth. We thank you for thank your love. Jesus. We thank you for your sacrifice. Oh, for us, Lord God, I pray, Holy yes. Spirit, that you would just strengthen us. Help us. Help us, Lord God, to, to take this word and mm. apply it to our lives. Help me. Lord God, not just to speak it and not to just give examples, but to continue to live it, mm. to continue to recognize those moments where you're calling me to humble myself, to put myself as a servant like you did, Lord God, and serve my family, serve my community, God. But Lord, I want to serve you first. And if serving you first means just dying to myself, help us, Lord. Lord, help me to recognize those areas where I need to let go of. Mm. And so, Lord, I pray that you would strengthen us all to recognize those moments we've missed so that we don't miss them again, yes. Lord God, and that we can continue to be made perfect, Lord God, yes. to continue towards our walk with you, Lord God, to be the people of God you've called us to be, to be those examples in the lives of our children, yes, Lord. in the lives of our spouses, Lord God, in the lives of our family and community, God. Help us, God, to recognize those God moments, Father, to recognize that check in our spirit, Holy Spirit, to put the phone down, mm. to turn the TV off, mm. to turn the radio off, Lord God, to turn off whatever gadget or computer we're on, Lord God, and take the time to see, Lord God, what you want us to see, to hear what you want us to hear, Holy Spirit, and to do what it is you're calling us to do. 
We thank you, Lord, for those people, Lord God, who need just a touch from you, God. Yes. Who may feel overwhelmed, who may feel tired. Maybe they feel they've been humbling themselves mm. and they just need a break, Lord God. I pray that we would take on your example, Lord God, that we would rest, but we would continue to do the work you've called us to do, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to trust you, to call upon your name when we're, when we're afraid, when we're frightened, when we're anxious. I pray for those that need a touch from you in their marriages, yes, in their homes, with their yes. children, with their grandchildren. I pray that you strengthen them, help their kids, help their family to find you, Lord God, for those that need prayer for the family who, does, who aren't walking with you. I pray that they would find you in this time, in the quiet, in the quietness of this quarantine, that they would hear your voice Amen. loudest, Lord God. Amen. That they would sense the presence of God speaking to them, yes. prompting them to look up. Holy Spirit, we thank you. And Lord, I am reminded of the example of Joseph. Thank you, Jesus. That he prospered in prison. He was faithful with a in a prison that he didn't belong in. He was unjustly accused, but he didn't complain. He was faithful for years there, um, so faithful that God, you ultimately elevated him to a position of greatness, as second in command to the Pharaoh, yes, the greatest Jesus. king at that time on the earth. God, I, I believe that there's someone that's listening today that is in a humble position. No one knows it, but they're broken. Yes. They've been, maybe they feel like they're on the shelf. They feel like no one cares, no one's watching. But God, today, oh, you're sweet. watching. God, yes, today, yes, you're with you them. Are, God. God, in the secret places, are forged the character Jesus. and the identity that yes, you want yes, to create, Lord, Lord, that can be used, Lord, on the pedestal. And yes. Lord, it's not... It's not the, the platform, Lord God, that, that we should be desiring. It should be um, to be humbled so that, God, when you give us yes, opportunity yes, to speak, Jesus. we'll be ready. And when you give us opportunity to lead, we'll be ready. And then we won't take the credit for it. We won't yes, want the Jesus. glory. We'll, we'll allow you to shine. We'll allow you to be the bright and morning star of our lives. And so, God, today... Be glorified in us and everything we do yes. and everything we say, God. Humble us. We repent. We turn to you, God. Remove whatever pride is there because, God, it will cause us to fall. And so, Lord, we pray, Holy Spirit, humble us. Teach us, Lord God, to walk with you. We thank you, God, for these attributes from Pastor Gumble that have helped us to see you more clearly, to see what you desire in a life that pleases you, God. And so today, help us to walk it out, and when Jesus. we fall short, to come back to Jesus, whose forgiveness yes. and grace is endless. Mm. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 We love you guys. We say it every day because it's true. It's true. You have been um, just constant in our lives and lives of others. And I'm believing for answered prayers for you. I believe that during this time that when we pray without ceasing, God just does something really awesome. And I pray that we don't go back to normal as normal looked for us before this um, quarantine. And that we would recognize that this has been such a, a, a miraculous time despite what some of us have been going through despite the death and the loss that we've gone through, something has been triggered, something has been awakened in our lives and in the church, and I pray that doesn't change when we go back. And so we love you. We pray that you would practice humility um, today and every day. So um, this is Susan and Nick out. We're out. And hey, tomorrow night we have our online prayer and Bible study. We'll be looking at, I think it's like the fifth in our series. I got to look at it today myself um, on the name, the power of Jesus's names. And we have that available through our app or website if you want to get that and follow along with us or just join us tomorrow. Even if you don't watch the video, it'll be great. Mm -hmm. Love you. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. for the morning, Dave. God bless you.